Okay, so now what we are going to do, we are going to talk about another Python library, which is pretty interesting and pretty important. Whenever we have to read data, then this library becomes very useful because it has got some good amount of utilities to actually help us in uh, uh, observing a lot of things with data, loading data and everything, right? We're talking about pandas and we are going to see a lot of things regarding pandas. Okay, so you can see I've op already opened Google Collab in front of you. Uh, if you have to do import of numpy, you do import numpy as np, right? And it just works like a charm. Let me run it. Right. Similar to that, if you have to import pandas, you write import pandas as pd. If you execute this, you can see successfully no error and pandas has been actually imported in your project. Right. Now, what's the limitation with NumPy that we have to introduce something like pandas? The limitation of NumPy is that it can only work with one data type at a time. Right. For example, just integers or just floats or everything. But most of the real world data sets that you're going to work with is going to have combination of numbers, strings, floats, etc. Right. Pandas, on the other hand, can help you to very efficiently work with numbers, strings, and all of these related data type very efficiently. Right. So we are going to use pandas for that. Now what we are going to do, we are going to load a corresponding data set. And in that data set, we are going to see how we can actually use pandas. So in order to load the data set, there is a, uh, I would say Linux utility called as wget, which can help us to actually download a bunch of stuff, right? If you want to just directly execute any Linux command in your uh, Python notebooks, what you can do, you can put an exclamation sign and then write, let's say something like ls. Okay. If you execute this, you can see it's going to give you the list of the file and folders, right? So you can write Linux commands there, but what we are going to do, we are going to use something like wget and I'm going to use this URL. This URL has a sample uh, data sets of weather data, right? That we can actually use and try to analyze with pandas. Let's try to run this piece of code. What it is going to do, it's going to download this content and you can see weather.csv has been successfully saved as simple as that. Now what happens is what happens is if you have to start reading this data, there is a function called as PD dot read underscore CSV. It's a CSV data. And then we'll give the name of the file. It is weather dot CSV. And what actually happens is this read CSV function returns us a data frame. I'll talk more about data frames that what are data frames, but for the timing, let's store it in a variable DF and let's see how that variable actually looks like. Let's run this code. And if you see how DF looks like, you can see there's a bunch of data that is, it is actually showing, right? These many rows are actually present, right? So it's a Pyth uh, pandas data frame. Now what is a pandas data frame? A data frame is a table like representation of data, but specifically in a data structure that is prepared by pandas. So pandas prepare a specific data structure called as this data frame, which actually does more or less something like representing your data in a tabular form, right? So what you can do, you can actually write type of DF and actually see what is the type of this variable DF. You will realize that it is pandas.core.dataframe, right? So pandas data frame is a data structure that pandas maintain in order to represent your data in more tabular fashion, right? Okay. Now, if you want to actually see the data, you can actually write a function df.info, right? Variable.info, right? What actually happens is if you run this code, you can see you will get the data about what are the different columns that are available, right? How many normal content are there, right? What is the type of the data? All of these stuff is actually visible by doing df.info, right? And let's say if you want to get some initial five, seven content, you can say df.head. It's, if you will just try to print df, it is going to print all of the records in the data frame. But if we don't want that, we can do something like df.head. What df.head is going to do? It is going to, let's say, just print the first five content. And then you can fairly visualize what is the data of all of these first five content. If you want some custom number of first content, so let's say if you want to get the first 10 contents, you can do df.head and space 10. It is now going to give you 10 data pointers to actually read, right? As simple as that. Then if you, instead of the first 10, you want the last 10, you can do df.tail and pass 10 here. 
and you'll be able to read the last 10 records as well so this how uh, this these uh, utilities are pretty interesting and pretty useful in order to actually uh, see some data instead of printing everything all together right okay now what will happen is what will happen is let's say if there is a column summary right if you will try to do something like df and inside square bracket summary you will see list of all of the summaries are actually coming up right so if you want to get a detail of a particular column in all of the rows you can actually use something like df of summary right as simple as that now this data frame also has a shape it has some dimensions you can actually take a look at it you can see there are 96,453 rows and 12 columns, right? As simple as that. Apart from that, you, there is a function called as df.describe. What df.describe actually does is, if let's say you want some statistical summary of each of the numerical values, you can actually get that. For example, you can see there are a bunch of columns which are having numerical values. So for these bunch of columns, if you want how many entries are there what is the mean of these entries what is the standard deviation minimum value right all of these things your 25th 25 percent percentile right your 50th percentile all of these things you can actually get maximum value by using df dot describe right by using df dot describe right also if you are using google collab there is a option that you will get like this using which you can convert your data frame into an interactive table right and then you can actually use something like this as well Right. If although there are only five seven records, but you can actually do this and go back to actually see some interesting charts. For example, you can see there is an option to actually see charts that how exactly the temperature looks like, humidity looks like, all of these columns based on the analysis of these columns. You can actually prepare some interesting data pointers as well that can help you to analyze the data if you are doing some kind of data analysis. Right. As simple as that. Now there are a bunch of operations that you can actually do on data frames, right? For example, if you do df dot columns, it will help you to actually get an array kind of a thing where you will be described, or I would say you will be given the names of all of the corresponding columns, right? Now, if you do something like df dot keys, now there is a method called as keys. You can see we are getting similar data, right? So if you want to get the name of the columns, you can either do df dot columns as a property or df dot keys as a method. Any one of these should work, right? As simple as that. Okay. Now let's say I told you that you can do something like df of summary and what will happen is, uh, sorry, my word, I guess it's summary. Right. And what's going to happen is that you are going to get all of the 9,453 records, but let's say you don't want all the 9,453 records. You just want the initial five records of the summary. You can use the head and the tail function here as well to actually get the data. And if you want multiple columns, for example, I also want the humidity column. You can just pass a comma separated value, your DF, right? You can say DF square bracket. Um, let's see what is happening. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, my bad. What you have to do is you have to pass this like an array like this. It's a syntactical sugar. You don't have to bang your head on why we are doing something like this. When you have to pass multiple columns, you have to pass those columns inside an array. And here you go. You can see now two columns we are able to visualize for the first five values as simple as that and then again there can be some interactive tables and charts that you can actually prepare right how cool is that so now let's see some more operations uh, using our data frames right for example you can see there is a column named as summary right let's say we want to rename that okay how can we do that we can say df dot rename this rename is a function which takes a Python dictionary as an argument. The key of the dictionary will be the current column name and the value of the dictionary is going to be the new name that you want to actually give. Right. Okay. 
if you will try to execute this query, you will see that nothing actually got changed, right? Why is that? Why is that? So this also takes an access property that you have to give. You have been seeing that I'm passing this access property for different other inputs as well. So now, now let's say that if you pass this access is equals to one, what will happen is now you can see the property has been changed. So if you will Google about access in pandas, right? Because this access will make a lot of sense at a lot of time, right? And you can read any stack overflow article access specific. It specifies the access along which the means are computed or whatever computation you want to do it, that is getting computed by default access equals to zero. This is consistent with numpy dot mean usage when access is specified explicitly, right? In numpy dot mean access equals to null by default, which computes the mean over the flattened array in which access equals to zero along the rows and access equals to one along the column. So you see, whenever you give access equals to one, you are technically doing the computation along the column. So you have to change the name of one of the columns, right? That's actually, you will do that here that you will pass access equals to one. And then it will see which column has a name summary. And then correspondingly, it will change the name to that, right? So this is a very cool feature. Sometimes uh, for your corresponding data processing, you have to keep some certain specific names of the column. This can be a pretty easy way to do that. Right. Okay. Now, now what you can actually do is let's say if you want to actually drop some columns, for example, I don't want this precip type, or let's say I don't want this humidity. How can we do that? You can remove a column very easily by doing df dot drop and then give the name of the column, right? And you can see this is not give, you have not given access here, right? So again, access is equals to one. If you will execute that, you can see now there is no, uh, I would say humidity column, right? So this access property is going to be extremely powerful. When uh, you give access equals to one, that means you are trying to do some computation along with the columns, right? As simple as that. Now let's just think about it. Let's just think about it. So let's say you want to do some specific computation and you want to compute a new column altogether. Let's say I want to create a new column df custom and this column should be equal to the sum of temperature and let's say, what should we say? Let's take this wind speed. Okay. Temperature plus wind speed. So I'll copy the name from here temperature. So I'll say this custom is going to be DF of temperature plus visibility. Okay. DF of visibility, right? As simple as that. If now you print the data frame, you can see that at the very last, there is a new column custom added. And in that column for every row, it's the sum of the temperature and the visibility. That's the name of the columns, right? As simple as that. So at any point of time, let's say you want to use two columns and based on those two columns, you want to compute a particularly new value. That is something that you can actually do there. Similar to that, you just how I have done addition, you can do some subtraction or some other type of multiplication, something like that, right? So overall pand uh, pandas, what it is going to do, it is going to give you a lot of, uh, I would say feasibility to actually read your data, try to process your data. And then at times what will happen is you have to combine the capabilities of pandas and combine the capabilities of numpy in order to actually do a lot of uh, data processing related stuff. Now we can actually use some more inbuilt operations that are given to us by our corresponding data frames. For example, let's say if the temperature property you have, you want to get the sum of all the temperatures or let's say maximum of all the temperatures or minimum of all the temperatures, what you can actually do is you can say DF and then whatever I would say column you have, then you say dot mean on it. You'll get the mean temperature, right? Let's say if you do a max on it, you'll get the maximum temperature. So there are functions like sum, min, max, count, these kind of functions that actually exist on your data frames that you can use. Apart from that, you can also sort your data frames. For example, you can do something like df.sort values. 
and then you can pass an array as an argument where you can actually mention what all columns you want to use in order to sort the data frame right if you click on it now if you will carefully realize that this is now no more a range in 0 1 2 3 4 this has been sorted from on the basis of temperature starting from the lowest most temperature to the highest most temperature this is what they have actually uh, already given to us right uh, if you want to pass multiple parameters for example there are two values with the same temperature then what you can do you can pass a comma separated column name to this array as an argument and then what will happen it will, it will sort that particular value as well right so this is something that is pretty cool right and one more uh, very cool operation that uh, you might want to use is going to be let's say you want to create a custom data frame you can create a custom data frame like this so you can say a is equals to pd dot data frame right pd dot data frame inside this you can pass an object which has a key as the name of the column right and the value that are going to be filled in the column let's say one comma two then another key and the values that are going to be filled right if now you see a you can see there is a new data frame with a as the column b as the column and in the column a the values are one two in the column b the values are three four right similar to this i'll make another data frame i'll call that as b let's change the values a bit let's say let's do it 81 maybe right now we have a data frame b now what you can do you can actually concatenate two data frames how can you do that you can actually say pd dot concat and then you can pass the data frames as an argument in an array and you can see all of the data frames have been combined this is row by row right and i believe now you got the idea that if first of all the rows of a are mentioned then rows of b are mentioned and if you want to do column wise you can pass axis is equals to one and you can see now it has been combined column by right so it's a pretty powerful trick as i said uh, just this a this access property is going to be pretty much very interesting that uh, you can have right and uh, there's a lot of uh, functions that actually use this access property to do a lot of stuff right apart from that what if you want some intersection of the column that is you want that uh, whatever is the common values you can get that so what you can do is instead of saying access equals to one there is another named argument that you can pass as join is equals to inner if you pass this you can see all of the corresponding uh, values are coming up right and if you read about join is equals to inner pandas right so you can see that um, let's see let's not do join uh, I would say concat join pandas right so if you go to the official docs you can see there are a lot of uh, uh, examples that they have given for example if you will pass pd.concat you're going to get a concatenated result like this right and this concat function takes a lot of arguments like access join ignore a lot of arguments are there this join property is either inner or outer default value is outer this handles this this is how to handle indexes on the axis outer for union inner for intersection right so whenever there is going to be any kind of intersection of the corresponding values inner is going to actually give you that right so you can see that there are a lot of uh, specificities that you have uh, with pandas now the thing is the more application you will do on different data sets for uh, these numpy and pandas libraries the better understanding you will get the main thing is you, you need to first of all get started with this and start reading a particular data set uh, load some csvs try to process them and then any kind of manipulation that you have to do you can actually do that using pandas and numpy these are some of the very cool libraries that are provided to us by python